Hi, I'm Ray Lim, motion designer and editor based here in Malaysia, and this is a documentary of the creation of a product solution animated explainer video for Eco Innovation, an Indian organization focusing on renewable water and addressing the Indian water crisis. So if you just want to see the final animated video, skip to this timestamp. If not, we will start with what the problem is and how Eco Innovation plans to address it. So this is my interview with Mansi Jain, one of the founders of Eco Innovation. Why don't you start by you know, introducing yourself, then tell me a bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. So sh should I dive into the company or just general? Uh, just about okay, yourself. Okay, I'll just give it myself generally. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay, hi. So Mansi, um, I am based in Delhi. So I recently graduated from college. I was studying in the US. Um, and yeah, just came back, I was very interested in sustainability issues. And like the intersection of sustainability and development. Uh, and specifically got very interested in water. Um, it's just a huge issue. There's a lot of water scarcity. I think like 55% of India already lives in extreme water scarcity. Mm. Uh, and there's also simultaneously a lot of sanitation issues, like in terms of sewage not being properly treated, waste not being managed well, all of that, and lots of disease burden that relates to that. So yeah, I just got interested in these issues and now I'm trying to create something off of it. The, the goal of this product is to make sewage treatment plants actually work for everyone. Um, so they need to work for the people who own them, they need to work for society as a whole. Um, the goal of the overall company is, I guess, to use to use data and operations expertise to improve water management in the country, or like to solve the water scarcity crisis. Okay, so let's start with the detailed overview of the problem. Like um, how long, how, how far back does it go? Like who is it affecting? Where does it come from? And so on and so forth. Sure, yeah. Okay, so that's a problem on many different, as on many different levels. So firstly, on the societal level, I guess uh, the problem is kind of as I described. Um, there's two twin problems. One is that there's a lot of water scarcity. The groundwater table is really drying up. The second is that water bodies are getting extremely polluted because of like sewage being released in them as well as chemicals and toxins. So there's this like, yeah, twin problem where, uh, which is kind of ironic because you have so much like water scarcity at the same time you're wasting and depleting the quality of the water you do have. Um, so that's a societal level problem. Then for the customer, basically the way that it works is that everyone um, above a certain size, whether they're a residential complex or a commercial complex, hospitals, hospitality, hospitality, everything, they're all supposed to have their own sewage treatment plants on site. And then on top of that, the government also has these large sewage treatment plants in a more centralized manner. But the issue with a lot of these plants is that they don't really work. Um, for, and that's for a number of reasons. So basically, like they get installed, there are these expensive installations, um, and then soon after, they just run into a lot of problems and just either don't operate at all, or they operate but produce very low quality water that doesn't end up being used. Um, and so a lot of the sewage actually ends up still being like bypassed into drains, even if there are these plants. And so the nature of this problem for customers is, like, wh why aren't these plants working? There's a few different reasons. One is that the people who design the plants are different from the people who operate them. Typically, the people who operate them have no understanding of how these plants work. Like they're they're basically like labor contractors who just kind of get labor to like operate them. Um, but there's a lot that they don't understand about like the underlying characteristics of the plant, and they just don't have the technical expertise to kind of resolve its issues. The second is yeah, I guess the operators on site are just like unskilled laborers. They don't really have the technical expertise needed. Um, there's also no real-time data being collected, and so you don't really know. You're not able to detect when there are problems happening until it's like escalated and very visible, and then it becomes costlier to resolve. Um, and then because of the limited budgets of the clients and whatever, they just don't end up resolving them. Um, another issue is that there's a lot of lack of transparency. Like supposing the op manpower at the site isn't doing their job, or they realize there's an issue, um, there's no like clear way for this to be communicated up. Uh, like there's just like many levels of hierarchy. There's the operators on site, there's the vendors that are managing them, then there's the client who owns the sewage treatment plant, and there's a lot of information asymmetry amongst all of these people. And so even if there's a known problem, like it may not escalate up in the right way. And so Let's uh, talk a bit more about the problem. So who, who is affected by these? Yeah, I guess the effects kind of trickled on in a lot of different places. Um, one is that on a societal level, there's a lot of fresh water that's being consumed to meet needs that the treated water could have been used to consume. And in cities where, I mean, the groundwater table is just really depleting in most Indian cities. Um, and so that's gonna have a lot of 
issues going forward. And also it raises the price of water for people because like for applications that you could have just used this treated water, you're using fresh water instead. And so price of fresh water is going up. Um, you're also depleting the quality of the fresh water because the deeper you dig to get out fresh water, the worse the quality is. Like you mix in all, yeah. Um, so that's the societal level implication. For the customers themselves, there's a lot of different issues. One is that they're paying money to maintain these plants, but there's still nothing happening. So it's just like a waste of their time, effort, money, whatever. Um, second is that there's like a government compliance and mandate um, that they need to like meet. That's why these plants exist at all. And so they're not being able to be compliant. So there's a business risk aspect um, because in case they're audited or whatever, like then they might be fine or shut down. Um, yeah, those are the main things. And then also if your plants are running in hazardous conditions, there, there could be like unsafe accidents on site. Um, there are operators who've like died in the process wow. because of, you know, hmm. yeah. So tell me more about the water treatment process, like what's involved, what kind of technologies, what kind of chemicals, like, just like go for it. Okay, sure. Um, okay, so I'll tell you specifically about like sewage treatment and then the uh, like treatment of the fresh river water and stuff is like kind of similar. Um, so for the sewage treatment, there's like a bunch of different processes. The first is the water just has to, like you have to remove the oil and grease from the water and any like big suspended solids in it. So that's the first layer. The second layer is this like elaborate biological treatment, which is basically like you have a bunch of bacteria in this tank um, and your job is to maintain the bacteria in optimal conditions. So like making sure the bacteria has enough nutrients, enough oxygen, uh, enough like ventilation, whatever. And then that bacteria basically like eats the nutrients in the water. So like the, the dirty chemicals or whatever in the water are eaten by these bacteria. So, and this is like a very core part of the treatment process. Um, and then you move on to layer three, which is basically where you, you dose chlorine um, to like disinfect the water. And then finally, you run the you run the water through a series of filters. So it'll just be like, you know, these like, it's kind of like a sieve. You can imagine like a giant sieve. So you run you run through like one or two of those kinds of filters mm -hmm. and then your treatment process will basically be over. Um, but there are a few like additional things people install. This is like the core process. The another thing some people install are like softeners and that's basically to like the water in India is very hard um, and you basically like run the water through a lot of salt. I mean, yeah, it's like another filter basically um, and then it softens the water and then that's when you can use it for some additional applications. Like for instance, like if you're using it in the cooling tower, like to cool the building, you need soft water. So that's when you need these kinds of like apparatus. Um, and then some people will take it to the next level and add an RO. Uh, an RO is basically what you would use to like treat it to drinking water level. So there are people who do like add these units and make it drinking water ready already. Um, but that's pretty rare. Okay, so tell me where the system goes wrong. How does where does it start to break down, and then you need a solution for that? Yeah, I mean, I guess the whole system is kind of messed up um, for like <laughs> the, a few of the reasons that I described. Uh, like you know the i mean the big thing is like it's just handled by these like you know low paid unskilled contractors um it's very the whole process is very labor dependent like you're kind of dependent on those one or two people who are manning your site if they decide they're leaving the job you your site kind of goes into haywire for a few days and then you have to like get it restarted um also these operators i mean yeah they're not like super skilled they're like minimum wage employees um who receive some minimal training, but like basically you don't know the technicalities of the process. And so even if there are issues arising, they may not see that, they may not like understand what it means, they may not know what to do about it. Um, second is that there's no data also to help them to like identify these issues. So there are some things they just can't see, like everything is not a visible problem. There are like underlying things happening with the equipment and things um, going wrong. So, and then, yeah, even if there is like, even if they understand what's going on, that it percolates up, there's no accountability or transparency in the system. So that the way that it percolates up to the people who are managing these uh, laborers or to the people who actually own the sewage treatment plant is very weak. Um, and then by the time you complete this whole process of like, okay, we've identified the problem, we've told the right people, already there have been like days that have passed, the issue's probably gotten worse. And then you have to like get the expertise to 
to actually address the problem. And a lot of, you know, most of these vendors might have like a few skilled engineers or something. They'll take some more days to like arrive on site and diagnose their own problem. Their information is incomplete as well. Um, so basically it's just like a really long cycle to like identify the problem and fix it. And it just, yeah, it's it just becomes too late. And, and all this like while, months and all this while, you have no right. clean water. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. So if the plant is not working, the sewage that's coming in, like you can't treat it, and so oh. you're just kind of like bypassing it into the drain. So all this like toxic sewage, like flushing water and stuff, is going straight into the drains, which goes into the rivers. Um, I mean, that's the worst case scenario. There are also cases where the plant is still working, like you're able to treat it. So it's not like you're just disposing sewage. But you're not treating it well. Like the quality of the output water is weak, or poor, and so no one wants to use it. It's just like you treat it so that you can like meet your compliance requirements a little bit. Like you're not just disposing sewage, but then you dispose the treated water into the drain. So it's still like a, a big waste, um, and it's a huge waste of everyone's time. Like there's so many people who get involved in the process trying to fix it and all of that. Okay, so um, I think it's high time we move on to the solution. So yeah, go ahead, tell me about it, start anywhere. Okay, sure. So basically, there's a few components of solution. Um, one, you know, the, it all begins with the installation of certain sensors. And so we've produced certain like in-house sensors. There's some standard sensors like, you know, temperature and pressure, looking at water flow, looking at tank levels. Um, and then there's some in-house like specialized sensors that we produced. So for instance, one of them is to do with the bar screen, the, the screen that I told you about initially. The first like, one, Like, right? can we detect, the, yeah. The first can we detect the levels of choking and things in them to see whether or not the bar screen is operating fine? Uh, another piece of um, sensors we've developed is like around water quality. Like, can we detect the clarity of the water at the end of the process and like optimize the operations based on that? Um, another thing is like, you know that test I told you about in the oxygen tank where they take it out in a jar and they look at the amount of sludge? Um, there's a lot of stuff you can tell from that. Like you, based on that, you need to determine how much sludge to remove from the process. You need to see whether or not the sludge are healthy, like whether they're settling too fast, they're too thin, too thick, floating, whatever. And so we've developed a sensor to kind of look at all of those things. So yeah, so that, so anyway, there's this package of sensors, which we kind of like take as a plug and play kit, install it on the site. Then based on that, there's a lot of like, like reporting that starts being generated instantly in terms of like end to end, the entire plant, like is it operating fine? Uh, what's the deal with the, the filters and stuff? Were they cleaned at the right time? Uh, was the bar screen clean? What's the quality of the water? What is the energy consumption and you know. So you, anyway, you get a lot of reporting. The reporting goes to the right people, like the service team that's supposed to be managing the operations, um, like not just the operators, but the team above them gets this like very comprehensive and detailed thing of like, everything that's happening and what does it mean and all of that. And then the clients or the owners of the plant get like less detailed key statistics of what they need to know about their plant health. Um, then also there's like this, there's this like workflow management system, which is like, you know, the, the task sheet I just showed you about, like when should those tasks be happening, all of that. And then there's link linked to that also, there are like training modules, like how do you, in case you need help, like how do you do that task well? Um, and we, we do have like, you know, some of our sensors and whatever help us detect whether or not you did the task well. So we can also like push you certain training modules uh, based on your like apparent needs. Um, and then a key part of the process is like, if there are any problems that are emerging um, from like, you know, the sensor data or from anything that we're seeing, like we will, we have like a bunch of algorithms on the back end that will like kind of instantly send you um, like what is it that you need to do? And it'll escalate the issue to the right person. Like if there's an electrical person, if there's an operator, client, whatever, it'll like tell whoever needs to know what, what they need to do. So it's like a, it's like a virtual engineer, like an expert engineer who knows everything about sewage treatment plants. Sounds like an all-in-one solution no? to, to, to really it's, regulate yeah, the plant. I mean, I guess like it's all in one. Yeah, that's the, that's the aim. Okay. I think a lot of solutions that have come out in the market are very like half asked like mm. they're just kind of like okay install some sensors see data on a dashboard but that's not enough like just seeing data is not going to solve a problem 
Alright, so at this point I had a pretty rough understanding of the context of the problem, so it's time to sketch out the outline of the process and the client can confirm or correct me on the spot. And once we had that proper outline, we explored in detail what goes wrong in each step. On screen now you can see it's highlighted in red and how her company plans to address each problem. So that does it for the information gathering stage. Now the actual interview is a couple hours long, so obviously I had to trim it for time's sake. So how do you take all that information and condense it and string it together into one single script? And you have to encapsulate all the critical information while still maintaining a good storytelling pacing. The phrasing and the narrative have to fit the animation medium as well, otherwise the end product would look quite off-putting. So we ended up going through a couple versions wherein the client had to correct inaccuracies and I had to make sure that everything had an appropriate pace and also appropriate to the animation medium. So I have the various iterations on screen now if you want to pause to read it and once the script was finalized, we booked the voice actress to actually voice it. Okay, so now that we have all the building blocks, the next step is to start sketching out what the actual scenes would look like. So this is commonly referred to as storyboarding. So in essence, I'm taking the words that we've crafted during the script writing session and translating them into visual elements. Remember, motion design is about communication first and art and aesthetic and things like that are really a secondary consideration. So really, this is where the animations are created and later on, during the designing and the animation phase, that's more like busy work. That's like realizing what we've planned in this stage. So in sketching the storyboard, I have to consider things like, is this the best visual representation for this particular concept or is there a better way to visually explain it? Are the diagrams factually accurate? Are the designs on brand? Are the illustrations aesthetically cohesive? So this is actually related to something called art direction, which I don't have time to cover right now. And perhaps the most critical one, how well do the scenes flow? And by flow, I mean how well does it morph and transition from scene to scene? Because remember, there's more than one scene going into this, so how are you going to weave each scene into the next? Now when done right, the audience doesn't actually realize you've moved on to a different point. So this also ties back to script writing from earlier, so how well you're able to craft your pacing and your narrative will massively influence how smoothly your scenes blend together later on. So this point alone will really separate the cream from the crop, so good animation flow often it goes unnoticed, but on the back end it's very intentional, it's not something that just happens. So on screen now are some direct text to visual translations, so you can see how I've gone from the base information to the finished product. And of course all these need to be reviewed with the client for inaccuracies. Okay, so that's how the prep work and the next step will be actually designing and animating all the individual scenes which is not really related to this documentary so we're gonna go ahead and skip to the final product. Enjoy! Well-run sewage treatment plants are key to a sustainable city. By treating wastewater from our buildings, they prevent pathogens from contaminating water bodies and provide us with usable recycled water. Today, when 54% of India faces extreme water scarcity and cities are running out of water, sewage treatment plants can help us save over 2 billion liters of water every day. Unfortunately, a lot of plants don't quite work this way. Take Mr. Raj's case, for example. Mr. Raj leads operations for a large corporation and has to juggle reviews, site visits, and endless paperwork to make sure all his facilities run optimally every day. On top of all this, he gets unexpected calls informing him that one of his plants is in shutdown due to operator mismanagement and another needs a budget increase of 7 lakhs to deal with equipment breakdowns. He spends a lot of time keeping tabs on his plants, but just last week he received a warning letter from local authorities that one of his sites has been non-compliant for over a month. Mr. Raj is not alone. More than 75% of India's sewage treatment plants face similar problems. With skilled and stable operators becoming increasingly hard to find and government vigilance increasing, improving plant operations will be progressively critical to meet water needs and growing compliance requirements. Eco InnoVision uses proprietary technology to transform your sewage treatment plant from a liability to an asset. Our one-stop solution revolutionizes plant operations to give you compliance and complete visibility of your plant from your desk, even while reducing each plant's life cycle costs by 25% over time. For an average plant, that's 8 lakh rupees a year. We have a proven track record with sewage treatment plants of different sizes and technologies, including MBR, ASP, MBBR, and SBR. We've enabled barely functional plants to effectively treat 100% of their sewage while reducing labor needs by 50% and energy consumption by 15%. So how does the transformation happen? 
First, we install our proprietary sensors that detect everything from bar screen blockage and blower performance to low sludge quality and treated water clarity. Second, we automate key parts of your plants to ensure consistency in operations. This includes everything from ensuring blowers and pumps run optimally to dosing chlorine based on need. Third, our real-time dashboards and regular reporting for you, as well as your managers and technicians, provides insightful data on over 75 key metrics so that everyone has complete visibility of the plant. This includes everything from water flow and quality to energy, safety risks, equipment efficiency, process parameters, maintenance needs, and more. Finally, we activate our virtual engineer that uses algorithms based on insights from hundreds of plants to detect problems early and diagnose their root cause instantly. For example, let's say your outlet water is contaminated. Without us, it might take weeks to diagnose whether the issue is with your grease removal system, diffuser performance, or poor nutrient buildup. On the other hand, our virtual engineer uses the readily available data to diagnose the issue almost in real time. Most importantly, we don't stop a diagnosis. We help make sure the issue is actually resolved. Our virtual engineer instantly sends your team the exact actions they need to take, along with targeted training content to make sure they do it right. The product also has built-in accountability features that ensure the issue reaches your desk if it isn't resolved on time. At Eco Innovision, we use technology to overhaul sewage treatment plant operations for maximum performance, as well as take a step towards solving India's water crisis. Our A to Z solution resolves problems in a fraction of the time and cost while preventing new problems from arising. Contact us to be stress-free and become a sustainability leader today. So that was it and now let's watch this exit interview to see what the client thinks about it and if the final product met her needs. So thanks so much for agreeing to do this testimonial, uh, testimonial video, really appreciate it. Yeah. So um, I guess the first question I have is, um, did the video meet your expectations? Yeah, definitely. No, the video exceeded my expectations. Yeah, I think it does a really, really good job communicating about the product in a way that like no other material that I have does. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be really helpful. And I think the animations are so smooth, <laughs> like all the transitions, etc. Right, right. And I didn't, I mean, I didn't quite expect that, I guess, because I only saw snippets of images, etc. So I didn't know where it was going. But yeah, the end product is great. So the technical illustrations and all, because there were a couple of parts like the blowers, the automations, and also your the graphs, the actual values, were they accurate and did they properly represent your product? Yeah, they did. They did. There was a lot of technical content we inserted in here, but it all came out well. Nice. That's great. That's great. So how would, uh, how would you use the video? Like, how would it help your sales? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm going to insert it in every cold email. <laughs> that's one. Um, secondly, yeah, when I talk to customers, very often they're like, send me some material um, to so I can understand your product more. So I'll be attaching this along with the brochure to send across to everyone. Um, and I think it'll help a lot because A, it does a very good job of communicating the emotions around why they should buy the product in terms of like the frustration, etc., that they're probably experiencing without it. Um, and then B also gives a very, like, very concrete examples of how the product will be used so that I think it'll help a lot. All right, all right, that's great. So I guess final question, um, what do you like most about the video? Like maybe it could be the transitions, the visual appeal, the characters, the technical accuracy and so forth. Um, yeah, I think I like two segments the most. One segment is the one where you show the, the manager who is very frustrated and you're showing the papers pile up oh, and right. the clock ticking. Because right. I think the feeling of frustration is very visceral here. And that's because of like, the transitions and how smoothly all the different elements stack up. Um, and then I also really enjoy the part where you're explaining like how the product works on a piece of paper and oh, showing like the graphs pop up and the graphs change and things. Because I think that makes it very concrete. That it's not just like a few data points that they're going to see. There's a lot more value that they're going to get from, mm -hmm. from the solution. Yeah, and all those data were actually based on the based on the data charts that you sent me. So they are actually accurate information. That right. that did take Yeah, take no, a I think that's great. Yeah. Yeah, so that, I'm glad it all worked out. So um, that's really much it. <laughs> thanks for seeing <laughs> me this entire way. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, no, thanks so much, Faith. I'm yeah, really excited welcome. to see this. You're yeah, welcome. Okay, so. Yeah. Um, and you know, I was worried. I was worried a four minute video would be too long, but 
because the video is done well, it doesn't feel. Mm, it doesn't like feel it. right. Yeah. yeah, when the transitions yeah. are done well, animation can run over time, but you, you still feel engaged because it's just so smooth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. I was definitely concerned when I saw how long the strip was getting, <laughs> but I think it's gonna be fine. All right, so that concludes this documentary. I really hope you learned something about the Indian water crisis. It's not typically something you would hear about, especially if you're from the West. And I am currently an active contractor in the motion design industry, so you can reach out if you want to book me for something similar. Thanks for watching and bye.